and welcome to the second Pokesave.org video tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the Pokemon Edit menu. Let's get started. Let's first look at a wild Pokemon. Here's a Star, star Raptor. Um, here's the Pokemon species at the top left corner. Here's the held item, which um, can be anything you want. Um, the trainer ID and the secret ID basically correspond to which, whichever trainer caught it. If you press the input own ID button, it'll enter your own ID. So say I change this to something random. Pressing input own ID will give that back to my original ID. Um, here's the level. You can change this, and the experience points will change too. So level 100 will obviously max it out. And then vice versa. If you change the experience points, your level will change as well. Um, happiness basically ranges from 0 to 255, and it's a measure of how loyal the Pokemon is to you. The PID, there's two functions under the PID. There's the PID IV generator, and then the normal PID generator. Um, I'll, I'll show you how to use this complex generator later, but for now, all you need to know is that a PID controls a Pokemon's nature, class, and gender, and as well as shininess. So if you change these, PokeSave will automatically generate a PID for you. Um, so say I wanted an adamant star actor, and male, shiny, it'll generate one for you. So in game, this PID will show up as male, adamant, and shiny. For individual values, um, in case you didn't know what these were, um, if you ch they're they basically add to your Pokemon stats, and they're all they're 31 max in each stat. So, but um, all 31 Pokemon are really rare, but you can press all 31 if you want to max out your Pokemon stats. Effort values also add to your Pokemon stats, and they're different because you can actually change them by training your Pokemon, and they'll go up as you train them. Um, they, there can only be 510 effort values max, so obviously pressing all 255 will make it your Pokemon an obvious hack. So you, and there can only be 255 max in each stat. So all you can do, all you can max out is basically two stats. So say I put 252, 252, and then um, six. I have to zero out all the other stats because this already adds up to 510. The nickname, basically, you can edit it by clicking this. And if you change it to anything other than its original name, you have to check the nickname box, too. I've nicknamed this Star Raptor, so the box is checked. The OT is your original trainer. Um, again, you can edit it using this menu and press input on IT, OT to make it your own name. The ball caught with, um, you want to change this to a Pokeball, a Great Ball, or a, um, say a Master Ball or a Dusk Ball. Um, it's just ba based on how you caught the Pokemon with which ball. Um, for the ability, um, if your Pokemon has more than one ability, pay attention to its class in the PID Generate menu. Um, if it's class 1, it'll be the first ability. And if it's class 2, it'll be the second ability. Um, I linked to a list in the annotations so you can see which Pokemon this matters for. If your Pokemon only has one ability, it can be either class. The marking just corresponds to the different squares and circles in the games that you can mark your Pokemon with. Um, the move set is basically self-explanatory. You can choose from any move, um, and you can um, customize its PPs. Um, if you're creating a Pokemon from scratch, I just suggest leaving these all at zero because you can heal at a Pokemon Center. Um, if you get these wrong, say you did 50, it'll say 50 out of 20. So it'll look like a hack initially. So I don't like to um, guess at these. I just like to leave them at zero and then uh, heal at a Pokemon Center in the game to max them out. Um, met at level and met at place. You can change the met at level to when you met your Pokemon. Um, and met at place is where. Um, and date met is the date at which you met your Pokemon. Um, I met this Pokemon near the launch of 
Perl, so it's in 2007. Um, if it's not a wild uh, a hatched Pokemon or a Pokemon that came from an egg, don't change any of this stuff. Leave it at zero, none, and 2000, zero, zero. Um, for the region slash version, this is the region where you caught or hatched the game. So um, this could be diamond or pearl or platinum, but if you pal parked it, it could also be any of the GBA regions. Um, gold and silver aren't used yet, so um, just leave that at pearl. Um, the ribbon edit menu just allows you to customize your ribbons, uh, but the classic ribbon um, will prevent you from trading it on the GTS. So, um, and some of the other ribbons are exclusive from Nintendo events. So, um, for the contest, check these from the top bottom. You might want also to change the contest stats, which basically are how well they judge how well you get judged on the contest. So, uh, 255 is max, but I'm not really familiar with these, so I don't know if they have an overall max. For the fateful encounter, this is only for certain event Pokemon, and the language is the region game you got the uh, Pokemon. Korean region, you can't trade from the Korean region to any of the other regions, so you usually don't want to check this unless you have a Korean game. And the only thing that matters in the hidden hex values is the 85H. This depends on which kind of Pokemon you have, so go to the link in the annotation to find a list um, so you can make your Pokemon legit, depending on which type it is. And this makes the Pokemon an egg. Obviously, you usually don't want that. And these are for the special type forms of Pokemon, of the Pokemon. And a lot of people go to the stats edit to max out these stats. Um, but um, if you change this and say you, say you change the current... I HP to like 400, it'll come back after you deposit it in a box to the max value. So you don't want to really um, change these higher than the all max button will give you. These, these max stats all depend on your IVs, EVs, and the individual Pokemon species. So yeah. Um, and then the status conditions, these are all temporary. All right. So I've shown you the Pokemon edit menu. Um, now I'm going to show you the generate PIDIV menu. This is an advanced menu, and it's only used for wild Pokemon. Basically, a Pokemon's PID can only correspond to certain sets of IVs. So this helps you find legit IVs, depending on the PID. You ha um, actually, it lets you find legit PIDs ba based on the IVs you have. Say I wanted all 31s and I wanted an uh, adamant star after. I would click generate and then try to find an adamant one. If there's no adamant one, I'd go back and change the IV slightly and then generate again. And I'd do this until I found an adamant star after. This can take a while or it can take a couple tries. It depends on how lucky you are. But once you find the Straptor you want, or whatever Pokemon you're trying to make, then just click on the nature you want it. Let's pretend this was adamant, because I'm too lazy to do any further generating. And then press OK. And then, yep, click on the one you want, and then press OK and then that'll assign the PID you want. And you might want to make sure that all the other stuff is right too, like if you wanted it male or female. So yeah. All right. Now I'm going to show you a hatched Pokemon, my Ninjask. All right, here's a hatched one. And the only things that are different about hatched ones, hatched Pokemon are um, that you have the egg hatch that value um, changed to daycare couple and then your day egg received. Another thing to note is that the PID and the IVs don't correspond at all in hatched Pokemon, so you don't need to go through this menu. Actually, don't go through this menu. You can pick whatever you want for these two. So hatched Pokemon are a bit more flexible. 
Otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same. All right, thanks for watching.